Hi, what's up, y'all? It's poppin' it's D-Buff, you're to this vid by Honest, it's title Euphoria Season 3. Do we need it at this point? No. No, we don't. I don't want to watch Crackhead Kids next year, okay? I wanted to watch Crackhead Kids last year in 2022. Now I'm over it, <laughs> all right? I'm over it. Y'all can keep it. I'm tired of HBO taking 50 years to return. Like, stop. Stop it. It's, it's annoying at this point. Well, hmm. in this case, though, I'm sure the strike played a role but even before the strike they was already planning to take years to come back so this is just what they do on a regular basis look how long it took game of thrones to finish like 30 years <laughs> it took 30 years for that whole series like bro nobody got time to wait this damn long it, it should not take this long netflix don't be taking this long with a lot of their series why well, don't have to wait so long they already about to release a new squid games and that just happened like what a year and some change ago i think so Anyway, let's see what they got to say. That was what. In 2019, Euphoria debuted on HBO. Actually, Netflix take a long time too. But I don't, I don't think they take as long as HBO. Nobody takes as long as HBO. 6.6 .6 million users on HBO Max. The Zendaya-led TV drama was already held a success, but became a phenomenon when the season two premiere was watched by 13.1 million viewers across HBO and HBO Max. Yeah, I was on this show though. I remember... <laughs> I remember I was literally downloading a VPN just so I could watch Euphoria when I was like in Spain or somewhere because HBO is blocked there for whatever reason. I don't know if that's about child. But yeah, so I had to download a VPN just so I could watch this when I was out the country. That's how invested I was in this show. I was like, no, I need to watch this next episode. <laughs> well, um, you know, at nighttime after I finish, you know, exploring, you know, doing what I, what I got to do for the day. At night before I'm going to sleep, I need to watch an episode. So I was on it. It then continued to garner more and more attention, with the fourth episode of the second season having more than double the amount of viewership as the fourth episode of the first season, a 166% increase. By the end of the second season, it had become and HBO's second most like, watched like, TV I'm show of interested. all time, second only to the iconic Game of Thrones. Funny enough, Euphoria also became the most years. tweeted about TV show <laughs> of the decade Whatever, after its second season but still buying Game of Thrones when it came to being the most tweeted TV show of all time. This is seen by the vast number of viral memes and tweets that are still referenced to this day. And although these two TV shows are drastically different in their subject matter and plots, I think that they both succeed at doing the same thing, creating nuanced characters and giving everyone in the audience at least one person to root for. Oftentimes you see both Euphoria and Game of Thrones fans arguing over whether the hate a character gets is deserved. Good examples of these are Jules from Euphoria oh, and Daenerys from Game of Thrones. I love her. These are sometimes characters that everyone unanimously enjoys, but for the most part, it's not uncommon for two people to watch the show and have vastly different favorite and least favorite Who characters. Who the fuck love Jules? And what is the You know what? I can't even talk because I love Nate. <laughs> and I just saw him on uh, Salt Bay. What's the name of that fucking show on Amazon? Child, that shit was weird as hell. Salt, salt Burn. Salt Bay? I ain't Salt Bay. Anyway, I just saw him on that show. Very weird. But I, I enjoy his acting. Because people on my Patreon, when I said this, they're like, ah, I can't. It's like, oh my God. Because we're different, okay? You don't like him. I don't care. <laughs> I like him. But it more so had to do with the fact that he's a great actor. And I just enjoy the complexity of his character, you know? Like, he was a shitty person, but... There were so many layers to him, you know, and you really got to understand why he was a terrible person, you know, because of look at his fucking parents and look at what he had to endure. It was just a lot. And I kind of, you know, uh, sympathized for him and all that. So, yes, I, I really liked his character. He's one of my favorites, honestly. Nate and um, I, I liked Cat, too. Well, the second season, I don't like her. The first season, I did. That's a Euphoria are tributed to. Like? Sam Levinson or Zendaya, plot or aesthetic, storyline or like bandwagon. When Euphoria aired, there like was really sister. nothing like it on television. It was hugely influential she with its oh avant-garde makeup though. style being hugely influential on culture. It was super gritty, brutal, and realistic, while also combining more fantastical moments. Euphoria obviously didn't invent this method of storytelling. 
But the way in which okay, each episode of season one details the backstory of a character, Period, I believe was hugely compelling. And helpfully And he's fine, so it helps, you know? Sam Levinson is a controversial Nate figure nowadays, with his show The Idol being accused of objectifying women and having misogynistic undertones. And Euphoria season two being controversial as well in its usage of female nudity and the so-called male gaze. However, when season one premiered, <laughs> criticism was few and far between with most critics and audiences deeming it an artistic triumph. In September of 2023, Sam Levinson was accused of stealing Euphoria's iconic cinematography aesthetic from photographer Petra Collins. The news garnered widespread That's attention, very, very similar, especially since very public similar. scrutiny was at an all-time high for Levinson. Well, yeah, the only one I can use colors. The book. Telling how Amy Simmons, the That's original awesome. director of The Idol, was fired when the show was almost complete due to, as Rolling Stone reported, the weekend wanting a less female driven perspective. The internet went wild following this article, lambasting Sam and Abel for the idol. And naturally, it being the internet, people started attacking Sam for euphoria, claiming that he was obsessed with sex and always wanted his actors to stand naked. However, his relationship with the actors does seem a bit more nuanced than the internet portrays it. Sydney Sweeney has come out and said that she disagreed with some scenes originally written for her to appear nude in, and that Sam agreed and didn't include those. Beyond that, Sweeney, and for that matter, none of the cast have ever spoken negatively about Sam, at least publicly. However, at this point, it's impossible to continue this video without speaking about Barbie Ferreira. A yeah, huge like source her. of drama surrounding season two had to do with Barbie here. Ferreira, who played Cat in Euphoria. As the season aired, rumors continued yeah. to build up a feud between Barbie and Levinson, with reports of Barbie storming off set and huge blowouts between the two. It didn't help level. either that Kat was the most sidelined main character in season two, without much of a storyline. And while Barbie oh, Pereira no, eventually claimed on record that her and Levinson had reached a mutual decision for her to leave the show, since she didn't want to be stuck as the fat sidekick, it is difficult to discern exactly what happened on that set. Regardless of the truth, however, the whole ordeal didn't bode well for Levinson and for season two of Euphoria as a whole. Now, I do think there is some genuine big criticisms for season two. There is a lot of inconsistencies. Oh, sure, I personally feel as though the door being shown in season two when Rue is at Lori's home was weird. Chepal's gun wow. is a narrative principle that wow, states that every so element different. in the story must be necessary. An irrelevant uh, element should be removed. Before for example, down. if a writer features a gun in a story, she there must be a reason this. for it, such as it being fired sometime later in the plot. Of course, there are authors who disagree with this narrative principle, but I do feel that it was strange to highlight Lori's home so much and then just completely ignore her presence after Rue left. Nothing ever followed up on it. But speaking of euphoria in its presence, is the public a little bit hypocritical? Of course. In March of 2023, Rolling okay. Stone published an investigative article revealing controversial behind the scenes details of HBO's The Idol. According to interviews with 13 cast and crew members, the production was marred by numerous issues. These included scripts with extreme physical and sexual violence, ongoing delays, reshoots and rewrites, leading one member to describe it as chaotic. The first major concern arose when director Seamates left the project, which was 80% complete. Reports suggested creative differences, with The Weeknd wanting a show focused show. more on his character. A perspective that Sam Levinson, the co-creator, reportedly supported. Levinson's increased involvement in directing led to the scrapping of the nearly finished project, which was originally budgeted between $54 and $75 million. He rewrote and reshot the entire series, amplifying the sexual content and nudity, aligning it with the explicit nature of his other HBO series, Euphoria. I do feel like the idol was intended to capitalize on Euphoria while Euphoria was on break. Mm. It was supposed to be the show that was supposed to continue the hype of Sam Levinson until Euphoria came back. About the idol, crew members expressed their disappointment, noting that the show shifted from being a dark satire about fame to embodying the very aspects it intended to critique. Concerns were raised about the portrayal of sexual content. Despite the public outcry and opposition to the idol, season one went on to average 1.2 million premiere night viewers, which grew to a total episodic average of 6 million. This controversy alongside the plot critiques from season two have left a large portion of the internet on the side that Euphoria season three should not proceed. Especially with the addition of the tragic passing of Angus, 
We cannot proceed with yeah. this video without talking about Angus. Angus Cloud, who portrayed Festo. Yeah, I'm tripping. He was one of my favorite characters, too. He was my favorite, actually, by far. And then, uh, Ashtray. And he did. Did he die or go to jail? No, he died. Yeah, he died. What the hell? So, yeah, y'all can keep it, to be honest. The show tragically died in 2023. He added so much heart and charisma to the show and was a true fan favorite. Sam Levinson expressed his yeah, condolences, alongside revealing favorite. that he had encouraged Cloud to seek help for his addictions and had staged multiple interventions for the late actor. Angus Cloud and Fesco, the character, played such a major part in Euphoria. It definitely will not be the same without him. So what are my thoughts on a potential season three of Euphoria? People are always going to hate on something popular. Euphoria isn't without its criticisms, but I do think a lot of the criticisms levied against it are a bit overblown. And no matter how loudly people may complain, people are going to be watching season three. It's also important to note that a lot of time has passed in between yeah, season two and season <laughs> one. When season one aired, it was genuinely fresh, revolutionary. I love this. And different from other shows, even those airing on HBO Ivania. at the time, Ivania, I don't think Euphoria will be Yolanda. irrelevant by the time season three airs, Ivania. but I do think its impact will be lessened. However, this is eventually true of everything fresh and new. It eventually loses its shine as society, art, and culture moves forward. I also think Euphoria will be looked upon more fondly in years following, once Euphoria ends and finds itself removed from the zeitgeist at large. Personally, I wouldn't mind a season three, but if it wasn't renewed, I wouldn't be upset or feel raw. Yeah, okay. Especially because the stars involved in Euphoria are all drastically moving on to different things. Zendaya, Jacob Elordi, and Sydney Sweeney are just on fire right now. But I still would... What the fuck thing? Zendaya, Jacob Elordi, and Sydney Sweeney are just on fire right now. Oh, Salt Burn. I get Salt Bay from Priscilla Williams. I don't know. It's like a romantic comedy. I hate romantic comedies. No, no, no. That's a lot. There's some really fire ones. It has to be really good, though. Like, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, what's another one I like? Um, I don't know. It's a couple, but most of them I hate. That's what that's giving. Challengers. This is like a sports movie. Don't want it. Who the fuck? Oh, that's Zendaya. I've never seen the first one. People talk about it a lot. I might watch it. But I still would like a proper conclusion to Euphoria if they find it. the time in their schedules to continue it. I don't care. I'm not counting down the days for its announcement or release date, but if and when it does release, I will be watching. I mean, I might watch it if I'm bored and I got nothing else to watch and I got the time. Because to be honest, I don't watch a lot of TV at all. Like, at all. Um, I can literally go weeks without watching TV. Um, but as long as HBO brings back, uh, White Lotus, <laughs> you know, I'm always talking about White Lotus. Listen, that is my shit, okay? That is one of the best shows I've watched in a very long time. Very invested in that show. They bring that back and The Last of Us, I don't care. Even though The Last of Us kind of has been ruined for me, someone I know has told me something big that happens. Because they played the video game. It's like, why the fuck would you tell me that? Oh, I thought you knew. Shut up. I hate people. Anyway, I want to watch those two shows. But Euphoria, if it comes back, cool. If it don't, don't care. But I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.